Hello Minecrafters and welcome to Cobble Valley. This is episode 8 and I am Jim Slate and we are in the middle of working on rotary craft. We've got a lot to do so we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and get started on this. Um, today one of the things I'm going to work on is uh, the canola seeds and getting lubricant. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I've got a couple of things made up so I'm going to go ahead and Let's see which one. Yeah, I'll go ahead and well, I'll go ahead and get in one more. All right. Um, I know last time we were working on getting our sludge together, and uh, we're going to turn it into ethanol. And I mean, it's really a, an easy process. All you've got to do is take your sludge, and I've got it on as my usual in and out here. I've I'm putting out the sludge, and I don't know. I'm pulling in sludge and ethanol because if you'll notice this pipe goes into the wall which is actually a facade that ties in with, with the rest of the network and uh, it's pulling from the farm downstairs that we worked on last episode uh, but what it does is it extracts the sludge into this and uh, so we can see We've got the insertion for the sludge, then the extractor. Hmm. Well, I guess since it's the only thing I'm extracting, it's extracting everything. Normally I go ahead and name it though. But uh, anyways, as soon as that cooks up, it drops here, then the extraction pulls it out, throws it over here into the chest, and then I've got a second set of pipes that extracts it from the chest up into the DSU, and as you can see, I've been running this for a little while, because uh, I've got just over 20,000 ethanol. But there's a problem with that. Um, I was actually looking at, our, our main goal for this has been to try and get to bedrock. Uh, once you can grind up the bedrock, get the bedrock powder, you can make the better the better tools. Um, I personally really like the bedrock armor. I uh, really like the bedrock tools because one, well, the main thing is they don't wear out. You can dig all day long and they don't wear out. But uh, so that that's one of the places we're trying to get. But I, as I started looking forward as to the next steps that I wanted to take, it was going to be a little difficult without trying to take the ethanol and turn it into jet fuel which takes I think it's five other components um, we will eventually do jet fuel because I want to get into the turbine but for now we're going to take a different route but we are still going to need our uh, canola seeds and so one of the things I want to do is be able to set up a canola farm uh, and get it automated and, and, and all that so one of the things that I wanted to show is the fans. Now these work really, really well with canola seeds and quite a few others. Now this is our basic DC electric motor that I use on quite a few things. And then we've got the Rotary Craft fan. Now normally we, like last episode, I said green is your input and blue or in uh, red is your output. Well, the fan has a blue, um, and this is one instance that I'll use the I.O. goggles from Rotary Craft. And what that'll do, that allows you, when you first place it, you get your lights, and then they fade out. When you turn it with the screwdriver, they flash up for a little while, then they go out. But with the goggles, it stays on. So you can really see, you know, how it's interacting, where your inputs are, where your outputs are, but with the fan, this blue area is actually the power of the fan that's blowing. So we can throw that up here, cut it on, and you'll see it extends out. Well, what this means is this is the area that this fan is blowing. Um, you do have to have the fan in view. As soon as the fan goes out of view, you'll lose your, your indicator there. But with it in view, you can tell what area this fan is going to harvest. Now, one thing that I have found, it seems like it shows one too far. 
because I've already set up a farm and we'll go down a couple and then back up because I overshot it and as you can see I got the fans cut off but uh, and this is the canola and all it is is dirt and take the hoe and till it make it farmland and then you plant your seeds um, and as you can see here I've run this quite a bit trying to get stocked up and but whenever you cut on these fans you will see as soon as that fan cuts on it'll start collecting those seeds and replanting and it can actually hit on either side of, uh, of the fan normally I run one fan per row just because I guess I'm kind of a completist uh, but the way this works is it will blow the seeds all the way down to the other end and I've got my advanced item collector here collecting all the seeds but you don't have to replant because all the all the fan does is it blows the seeds off and normally okay I guess it might have just been a little lag or something but like I said it'll blow the seeds all the way down but as you can see the blue is in this area but it's not getting these and I think what it is is by the time it gets to the very end of its reach it doesn't quite have enough power to to work the canola seed so I just leave that there uh, you could take it up and make your area a little bit smaller but this does really work well and then of course I've got the open blocks tank here uh, with the open block sprinkler and as you can see I've got it ducked over here um, and that duct goes downstairs to my aqueous accumulator to get my water supply up here and you can you can go well you can misclick and all that other stuff and really show off and I got it over here to get my sprinkler back out because that item thing will will suck it up from just about anywhere and let's see if I can get it turned. There we go. Anyways, uh, if you take that sprinkler and set it on top of the, the tank with water in it, it will cover an 8 by 8 area. And um, you can also open that up. You can put bone meal in here to speed things up. But, I mean, as you can see, I've got a, I've got a plethora of seeds. So there's really no need for that. Um, and then I've got this set up over here. And um, actually, let me take the glasses off so it's a little bit easier to see and I'll go ahead and cut these back off so it's not quite as loud alright now what we've got here is of course I've got my, or my dimensional transceiver from Ender IO that's basically just my power input into the magnetostatic engine uh, the one that we are running is the level 1 upgrade don't know if it shows it. No, it doesn't show anywhere on here. Um, we've got that running as high as it'll go, basically. Uh, that's going into a steel 4 to 1 gearbox. And this is set for torque. And so this is what our output is. And then that goes into the grinder. And of course, it's getting fed from here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I've, I actually went over this some in the last episode, but I just wanted to recap a little bit. Now, I've got one line coming under, going into the bottom of this, to make sure it stays full of lubricant here. Now, once that fills up, it will come over, since this is further away, and it'll start filling these tanks. Uh, this is just a uh, regular extra utilities, I think it's iron drum, steel drum it's made out of iron uh, so I mean they're they're pretty easy to make um, they don't take that much at all and you can just you can take your power uh, power fist or crescent wrench or whatever and shift right click and normally you can just grab them up but sometimes you got to chase them back over to the box but it's a good idea to go ahead and let this run for a little while that way you can build up some stores because the next thing we're gonna do is going to be very steel intensive it's going to take a lot of steel 
and it's going to take a good bit of the um, lubricant to get started but we're also going to get a lot of power so now first of all I'm going to show you a little addition to the house now I don't know how familiar you are with the outside of my house but that's the addition now I started off I was going to go on the back side and then I changed it so then I was going on the right side and I'll show you what this is and if you can see that you might have a clue of what we're doing so we'll go back down and take our elevator up and this is a water trough and that is marble but behind this marble is a drawbridge and that drawbridge has 14 marble in it which I can open and shut and this leads to what we're getting ready to work with so I'll take off all the way down to the bottom now now I do apologize we are down at bedrock so it can be a little difficult to see I'll, I will do it the best I can with that and I need to put my helmet back on if I'm gonna fly okay Let's see we've got water coming down and it'll actually stop in a little bit because I did stop it while I was up top um, but what we're gonna do is we're going to be working with I'll leave it down here ah yes the hydrokinetic engine now what this is it's a water wheel um, it uses water power and how much water is coming down okay there's the bottom of the water oh wow Looks like I've got more that hasn't come down yet. Oh, no, it has. I've just got to wait for this to clear through. But anyways, once that clears through, we can get this placed and started. Now, you don't have to have as large of an area or as many of these as I do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set up 14 of them across here. Reason being is because I want to make sure I've got enough to start drilling bedrock. Uh, and afterwards, I'll use this for other things as well. So basically, you want to play or you want to dig out, dig out a three high area. Uh, another thing you want to keep in mind is with with these. Um, hydrokinetic engines you want your water to drop at least I think it's 64 or 65 blocks uh, actually I think I've got mine set for 80 um, the, the further it drops up to 64 or 65 the more power it'll end up having anything beyond that is, is just well for me it's just making sure that I'm not wasting my time and my materials and the reason I say that is because if I can get that last one to why won't you place all right I definitely don't want you up there okay now these 14 take about 1020 HSLA steel to make so they're they are quite intensive as far as materials to make them uh, which is why I try and make sure that I get the most bang for my buck and make sure that I've got it my water dropping plenty high so that I can get as as much efficiency out of these as I can 
And the good thing is, it, it's a water drop. So once you've got the water set up, you've got the power there. Um, really, all you have to do after that is just make sure that they're fed with lubricant so that they don't start sparking and losing power, and then they start taking damage, and they will eventually break if you don't keep lubricant in them. So, grab a few other things up here. And we'll start getting this thing put together. Now, one of the... I know, I think it was last episode, I was talking about the um, green coming in and the red coming out, but that some items were adjustable. And this is one of the items that I was referring to. And as you can see, these, all the water wheels are hydrokinetic engines. The red is from them, you know, overlapping on each other. Now, this green you can see coming out here is going to be backwards. Now, the, the thing of it is, whenever you right-click on this, you've got an input side and an output side. And I think I've got yeah, bevel gear. I can put one down here. Now, you can see each side is a different color. Wow. Getting all kinds of funky stuff off that. Let's put it up a little bit. I know. I can stand on top of the box and do that. All right, let's just throw one up on the wall here. Now, you can see here the orange is red, and... Okay. I guess that's... It's a little hard to work with this down near bedrock, but you can see right along the corner there, or the edge there, that little bit of yellow. And I'll just place another one. Yeah, why not? You can see that yellow there, and on this one you can see the orange here. What that means is the green on the orange means your input is orange, and then your output is yellow. However, what we actually want, we want our output to be on orange. So instead of yellow, we want orange. And then our input, yellow. Is that right? No, because that's going to be over there. Uh, what was that? I believe that's black. So we'll do our input on black. There we go. Now see we got our green here going in, which is our input, and our red on our output. Now you got to play around with it sometimes till you get the hang of those. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's not usually too difficult. Okay, next coming out of this, I want to be able to see what my output is. And like I said last time, that's, that's not really something you have to put in. Um, I like it just because it, it makes it a little easier to tell what we're doing with it. Um, but this is going to be, actually no, that's not the next thing. Because I want to put a clutch in here. And I should have, yeah, I get a fan put it up there. Now, if I take the clutch, put that there, then I can put my monitor there. And, yeah, I've got that and a switch. And I'll put that block there and that switch. And what that'll do is that switch will energize this block, which will give this a redstone signal to cut the clutch, the clutch, to cut the clutch on and off. <clears throat> okay, then from there, I want to go into, I can't use that. Actually, I think I can go straight into the grinder from there. Except, we're actually going to run the grinder with something else. And that's going to be a shaft junction. Now, one of the things that I have found, especially running as many of these as I am, is that until we get to bedrock, I can't use a lot of the um, 
devices and blocks and things like that that come with rotary graph because I've got too much torque. Um, the, the majority of your um, 16 to 1, 8 to 1, 4 to 1, all your gear ratios, things like that, and pretty much any of them with ratings, I'm not going to be able to use until I get bedrock. So what I'm going to do is try and use some of the items that don't have ratings, like the shaft junction, uh, bevel gears. I can't use this one because as you can see there, uh, we're talking, I think that's, let's see, that's 6,000 kilonewtons per meter. And I can't remember exactly what this is going to push, but it will blow it up. So I want to go in with the shaft junction. And what that allows me to do is I can split the power. Now, the way this is currently set up, on my glasses again, is I've got two reds and a green. Because this works two ways. You can put one motor in and come off of it two directions. Or you can shift right click with the screwdriver and okay now it's set for that okay here we go you can take two motors and go in and then have one output which let me put this on the floor it might be easier to tell there we go so with this you could have two motors coming in combine their torque as long as they have the same speed and go output or to one output which would combine the torque of the two motors on it or you can take this and shift right click which will have one input which is what we'll have up here to two outputs and that's actually the the style of it that we're going to use on this did I grab that back? Yeah. now I want that one there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw I'm going to throw a grinder on the end of this because what I want to do is that's not a grinder what am I doing? Where's, ah, there's my grinder I'm going to throw a grinder on the end because what I want to do is while I'm running I want to be trying to put um, lubricant back into the system because each one of these motors if you look up at the very top uh, you can see where it's outlined in blue and it says hydrokinetic engine lubricant zero millibuckets as soon as I put lubricant in this end one down here it's going to start feeding all of the others and with 14 it's going to take a good bit so I want to make sure I am feeding back into the system the whole time it's running until I can at least get some uh, get some lubricant stocked up and let's see next I want to go to actually I think I'm gonna go ahead and run a bubble gear here now that's just like the one that we put in over here but this one we want down now we can already see that our red should be going back over there and that's actually the wrong way because we want red on cayenne here or cyan or however you want to do it so that's down and we want the green to be back over there so that way greens over here that's our input reds going down so then we'll take a block and stick it there and a miss so there and we're going to take our bedrock breaker and set it on top of this now this does have a range of four so for four blocks under it it'll break bedrock now it will not break the last one uh, meaning you know we're on level four so that means it will break three bedrock under us but it will not break that last one even I mean definitely now because it wouldn't have the range but even if this was all the way down 
and it has a range of four, it will not break through that very last one. That way you don't have to worry about drilling through to nowhere. So let's see, that should, that should be pretty well set up. So the only other thing we need to do is we're going to need to get some item duck and put that on there. Get some canola seed. Now we want to set the extract. Take off the redstone signal to that. Um, get up top and take the glasses off because that flickering will drive me nuts. Okay, set that one to insert. So that's filled that up. And then we'll want to take. There we go. And this time I'm using pressurized. Um, I have found that the pressurized fluid conduct conduit works a little better than the regular because the regular one is affected by gravity, but the pressurized one is not. So I'll shift click that one, set it to extract, and then we're going to run this back up here. And I'm not sure exactly how far I need to go because got tanks here. Now this is a tank from Open Blocks, same tank that I'm using upstairs under the sprinkler. But this is a, a um, it's a very inexpensive tank that you can use. Um. Let's see, then I need one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Hey, looks like I might have enough. Hey, with one to grow on. Sweet. Okay, and that wants to be input. That one I want to extract. Insert. You should already be on extract. And uh, did I get that other barrel? Yeah, I did. Now, what I want to do, actually, put this over here. Let's see. That one should be under that, so if I put it there, I should be okay. And then I want to set that to extract. Because basically what I'm wanting to do is start filling up these uh, hydrokinetic engines. I want to make sure they've all got lubricant. And basically that's all going to flow in, and I believe it will all equalize all the way across. Uh, we can give that just a minute to, to see what it, yep. Yeah, it looks like it's equalizing out. Yep, and there we go. So they're all, um, I think, I think each one holds 5,000 millibuckets. It's either four or five, I'm not positive. But anyways, the way this should work is our canola seeds will export out of this box into the grinder. From the grinder it will grind those up making lubricant which will export out of here through that into our tanks up top and then flow back into here. And at the same time this gearing will be turning our bedrock breaker which should start cutting into the bedrock. So We'll use the home button to get up top, the elevator to get up the rest of the way, flip the switch, our water starts, or that retracts, our water starts flowing, and if you look over to the right, you can see we're at level 52. So then we go back down the elevators, 
We must be full over here. Yep, we are. I'll get that running again here in a little bit. All right, and we've got all of these running all the way across. And hopefully we flip this switch and we're running. And we're not. So let's see if we can. Hmm. I, I would say that I have this turned the wrong way. I've got one input and I want two outputs. And that should. Oh, wait, no. I want two reds. So I need to shift right click. And then the green should be the furthest away. Do it again. Come on. There we go. So we got, I'll put my glasses back on for that one. So we have our green over here for our input. And then the two reds over here for the output. So we are turning our grinder over here. I guess I need to click on it with something other than the screwdriver unless I want to turn it. So we have our grinder running. It's a little slow, but it is running. And we have our bevel gear turning, which is in turn turning our bedrock breaker. And if you'll notice up top where it says bedrock, when we get under here, it's bedrock slice. And you can also notice that it is just a little bit shorter than the other bedrock. Now this will, like I said, it has a range of four, so we'll end up uh, drilling down three through three bedrock. And we'll get two powder per bedrock, or three per bedrock cube. So per layer, you will get two powder. Uh, it takes a while, uh, especially at the speeds I'm running. The, because of the way this is set up, it has such a high torque rating that I can't really use any of the gearing or anything like that. But once I start getting some powder, then I can either make some CVTs um, or I can make um, some of the gear reductions. And then I can switch them from torque to speed to speed all this up. But as you can see up top, you're looking at a 22.4 second operation time. That's not to go through the whole block. That's to go through one slice. And if I'm not mistaken, there are 10 slices per block. And you can see it just dropped down one more. So we will let this run for a minute. And we shall return here shortly. And we're back. So as you can see, this is dug down a little bit. And we're at bedrock again. And we'll give it just a little bit more time. And it should say slice again. And there's the slice. So that means it is still digging. But it has done one full block. So if you right click on this, it will drop your powder, which can be kind of a pain. But what I'll usually do is not have the thing I need. So go back up to the top back down and I'll just snag this one off of here because we're not running anything here anyways right now grab my little item to or my item collector and it's not going to go on because of that and let's see I've only got one left. I think I can do it this way. Come off of there, come toward me.
see if this won't work out right. And I'm still on that. Yeah. All right, now that's still connected. Now let's see if we can't put that on there. All right, get that targeted. And we'll just run that update all the way around. And that should have picked that up. And there we are. We have finally gotten to bedrock dust. Um, and so, like I said, these three will get us six dust. We can use that to start making some shafts. And then we can start running this outwards until we can collect some more dust. Uh, with that dust, we can do anything from, we can start making some upgrades to our magnetostatic engine. We can do the CVTs, which allow us to basically do a eight or 16 or whatever gear ratio all the way up to 32, but it's done with belts. So the same machine can connect with all those. And I'll show that later as soon as I've got enough bedrock dust to start crafting up a couple of those. And this right here, as soon as we start getting the bedrock dust and start being able to make some of those other devices and items that are stronger, that can handle the torque from all this, that will allow us to start expanding and getting this a little bit quicker. So glad I was able to get to the bedrock tonight. And I hope this helped. And if it did, if you could help me, click like. If you want to be notified when I post up more videos, make sure to subscribe. But most of all, just take care and God bless. And have a good one.